Grand Soy Unified Theory. How have this started off? Is this is one of our conspiracies that came off of our conspiracy list? This was the conspiracy that I've had to do the most research on. That I was successful. I, like I said, I've been trying to find sexual assault missiles for probably about half a week now. I can't find anything, so I think it's a joke. If it's not a joke, it's pretty awesome. It might be related to the gay bombs we developed, but we'll do that another time. I think most people know about the gay bombs anyways. The bombs that are supposed to turn the enemy gay. They're from the 1990s. It's totally legit. We, we'll, do, we'll cover that some other time. We'll cover wacky weapons of war. But Grand Soy Unified Theory. People go, ah, oh, it's just a joke. That's just the joke. I think I've found just enough information, maybe not to prove, but to suggest that it's more than a joke. So first off, what we look at, it, you have to break it down into certain questions. The first question is, is soy sentient? Now, this is something we talked about on the episode Oil and Water with Dr. Emoto um, looking at glasses of water and going, you're beautiful, I love you, you're so great. And then it creates beautiful ice crystals. And if you look at the water and you're like, oh, you suck, you're terrible, I hate you so much, and you smell like spaghetti, the, we dismiss the water as sentient thing because it's it can't really be controlled. But the question is now, we're going to move it, is soy sentient? If you talk to a soybean, if you, if you talk beautifully and you treat the plant well with great emotional energy will the plant sprout better now the idea of playing music for plants is well known so the you know people have said yes plants can respawn you know the science may be a little shaky but it, you know the theory is, is that plants can respond to the mood of the people around them you treat them well you talk to them you play music they grow better so the initial question of is soy sentient I'm going to say yes. But see, that led us down a deeper path because that was only just one part of the soy conspiracy list. On the conspiracy list, there's several elements. Soy keeps popping up. The second question is, is soy intelligent? Now, we're going to table that for just a moment. We're going to go ahead and move on to another theory. And see, the reason why this is the grand soy unified theory is that all of these theories combine into one like a Voltron, deep soy. So deep soy would be similar to the deep state, which is a term that we've heard a lot since Trump became president. It's a shadow government within the main government that tries to pull the strings. And they they get stymied a lot, but because they have all of these assets in the field and all of these projects off the books, sometimes they think that they can run the government and and maybe sometimes they do maybe like during the reagan administration you had elements running iran contra and stuff like that that would be considered deep state so what's deep soy how does that play into it well deep soy is a step away from the plan itself and that's where we have companies like monsanto uh, genetically modifying soybeans because soybeans are one of the i probably should have started with this but soybeans are one of the most valuable crop on the planet now yes wheat is the most it's wheat's growing on every continent except antarctica it's the most it's been the oldest plant that we've grown we grow it all the time but soybeans it started off about and they really don't know but about 5000 bc in asia and it's funny because they can actually trace the soybean. I, I know so much about soybeans now. It's all useless information after this podcast is recorded. <sighs> they can trace soybeans in America to an actual person. What happened was there was a Japanese sailor whose boat wrecked. And he was rescued by some American sailors. And this was back in like the 1800s. And he goes, hey, thanks for rescuing me. Here's some soybeans. So we can trace it back. That We have their names. I don't remember them. But anyways, they'll be in the article. And then they brought the soybeans to America. They began planting them. And then George Washington Carver, who I don't know if they talk about him in school anymore. When I was in school, they always had a little segment on George Washington Carver and the peanut and all that stuff. He was actually the one who was like, man, we could use these things for oil. Like, these things would be great lubricant. And then Henry Ford actually, in every car he made, a bushel of soybeans were used. 
to assemble that car. A lot of the plastics in that car were made of soybeans. And at one point, he actually made an entire car frame out of plastic that was generated from soybeans. Soybeans today, what we use them for is we use them as a lubricant. And we also use them as a food source for animals originally. And then we use them as food for us. Now, part of the problem is is that there's mixed science on whether or not... Okay, it's not mixed science. The science is pretty conclusive that soy is relatively good for you. But there's mixed opinions on whether or not soy causes too much estrogen in people. And it causes girls to go through puberty younger. And it causes men to have health problems like cancers that are usually alleviated with a higher, a higher amount of... As, uh, testosterone so deep soy comes into the fact that, so after that overview deep soy is where you have monsanto actually trying to control the supply of soybeans and if you can control the soybeans you can control all of those other industries so uh soy there's been genetically modified soybeans that have gotten loose into the wild and then begin planting and choking out the natural soybeans there have been times where they've created a soybean and it's gone through the, the safety process where they're like, this soybean's totally fine, and they release it, and then scientists have discovered that there's extra, extra DNA in these soybeans. The soybeans now have unknown DNA. They can't figure out why it's there or what it's doing or what health effects it has on humans. And Monsanto is like, oh, no, no, it's totally cool. It's totally cool. And the European agency that that discovered this is like, I do. It has extra DNA. However, you just waving it off and saying that's cool and putting on your sunglasses and skateboarding off to the ice cream store. Like it's not cool that it has extra DNA. So Monsanto would be considered deep soy. Control the beans. Control the world. Now they've talked about things like weaponized soy. And that would be the equivalent of creating the soy to either germinate in areas and choke out the natural soybeans. So eventually the only beans that are out there are Monsanto beans. And you will have to buy more beans from Monsanto to keep your soybeans running, your soy farm running, soybean farm running. And then there's the theory that coins are being sprayed with soy. Now, I know that sounds ridiculous at first, but hear me out. If soy does cause trouble with the human species if and actually like raw soybean flour can can kill you it causes pancreatic cancer raw soybean flour before it's produced and just raw soybeans themselves they're they're they're, they will make humans sick they have to be prepared according to the research i've done i'm gonna put dude the amount of links i have just soybean related is ridiculous but anyway so Oh, I want to make sure that I'm sure that I'll have to keep updating it because I like, oh, I forgot this article. But so is soy being sprayed on coins? The point of that would be is to make sure that every man, woman and child is getting dosed with soy to have these health effects. Now, and the thing is, is like soy itself may be affecting our brains, not just our body, but our brains, to make us want to consume more soy. Now, we know that there's sugar addictions, and what's crazy is that you have the addictive thing in your brain, but your body, if you eat carbs and you eat a lot of sugar, your body, in your stomach, flora, no, it's fauna, will grow that causes you, that feeds only off sugar and carbs, and it's in your guts. And that sugar craving you have isn't in your brain. It's the fauna in your stomach, in your intestines, releasing chemicals into your bloodstream to make you crave sugar. Because without it, if you go 48 hours with no carbs, that fauna begins to die. And like anything, if you're starving, you're going to start dialing Domino's. And Domino's comes to your house. The fauna in your gut will say, sugar, sugar, sugar. And unless you can try this part of the keto diet, unless you can control that chemical release, and it is hard. That's why you crave that sugar. You're at, there's actually almost like an alien, alien to your body life form in there that's making you crave that sugar. You can go 48 hours without sugar and carbs, you're totally fine. You don't crave it anymore. You don't look at a Snickers and go, oh man, I really want that. But in that initial 48 hour period, you do want that Snickers. It's crazy. So we know that sugar, you can have that craving for carbs and sugar. 
What if that same type of mechanism is developing in us for soy? Now, again, soy's really only been cultivated in the past 5,000 years, and we've been around for, what, 100,000? Longer than that? And before we could process it, we couldn't eat it. And it's only been in the Western world since about, like, the 1600s. So, what if it is now making our bodies crave soy, so we grow more soy, so we eat more soy? And whoever is trying to weaponize soy or spray it on coins or put it into our water system, they would be part of the deep soy system. They're trying to create. You're constantly surrounded by soy. You're touching it and then you're touching your mouth even if you don't think you're eating soy. You're craving more soy. You're getting soy all the time. All the time in your system, which makes you crave more soy. So you're going to buy more soy. And soy is going to be growing more. Now I know what you're thinking. Jason, that's all genius and that's partially true but i know what you're also thinking what does any of this have to do with the point you left out is soy intelligent i looked into this and looked into this and looked into this i was trying to find if soybeans released chemicals where they could talk to each other i was trying to find if soybean roots touched so they could talk to each other I was trying to find any sort of communication methods for soy, the soybean plants. I did learn that their roots can grow up to four feet deep, which is much deeper than most vegetables, and definitely much much deeper than almost any other bean. I think any other bean, actually. Four feet deep. That's like a fifth grader. And then... I decided I had a little stroke of, stroke of inspiration. And I thought... I did an episode a while back about a giant mushroom, a giant fungus that was so big and so old is the largest life form on the planet and has that mycelium underneath and how how it can use itself to communicate. It can send signals from one end of it to the other. The mycelium is made to absorb nutrients and water and create the life form, but it also it's basically a neural network. And I started to look that up, and I was seeing articles saying that plants can communicate through fungus. If plants have this neural network, they can communicate through fungus. And that, that is when I had my Pepe Silvia moment. Now, Pepe Silvia is a character who may or may not have existed in the world of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Technically, he did exist. We just never saw him. But he was the core of the conspiracy that Charlie was trying to figure out. Who is Pepe Silvia? I googled soybeans, mycelium. The soybeans are infested with it in America. Infested with it. They don't know where it came from. They don't know why it grows. And a soybean plant with the mycelium spread out underneath the ground can still produce soybeans. And it takes over entire fields, entire crops. So in that field, it can pass messages from one soybean plant to the other. They can talk. They can gain intelligence. And they can plan their maneuvers. They're sentient. We've checked that. They're intelligent. They have a neural network. There's companies and groups on the outside like Monsanto who has made it their goal to spread the soybean. And through both outside factors like greedy corporations, making sure that soybeans are in every type of food, that making sure that their genetically modified soybeans are infesting otherwise fertile lands and growing. And who knows, maybe it's the, maybe that's part of the extra DNA. Maybe they have engineered the soybean to have the mycelium to create the neural network so the soybeans can talk. Because maybe it's not Monsanto running the soybean farms. Maybe it's the soybean farms infesting us and making us eat more of them, making us become vegan, making us become health conscious, making us go through puberty earlier. 
evo- trying to get us to a stage where we just want to eat nothing but soy, nothing but soy. And that is how it controls us. That is the grand unified soy theory from the initial beans being picked 5,000 years ago all the way to today. All the weird coincidences, like what are the chances of them finding a Japanese guy who happened to have a bunch of soybeans on his back? To George Washington Carver figuring out all this great stuff. To us not only using them for food, but using them in the production of automobiles and petroleum. We want, we need the soybeans. If the soybeans disappeared, civilization would fall apart. That is the grand soy unified theory. Well, that wraps it up for this episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I hope you had a fun time learning the truth about soy. I know I did. Now, everything I said, except for maybe three things, was absolutely true and could be backed up with evidence. Monsanto has made soybeans when they genetically modified them. Now there's extra parts of DNA and missing parts of DNA and all of that. The history of the soybean, how it being brought to America was just a guy with soybean on his back. So maybe he was controlled by soybean. But then the opinion jumped in. Is soy sentient? There's no nothing to back that up. The only place I found that at was on a deleted Reddit post that someone quoted. The fact that mycelium is some sort of neural network that allows soybeans to plot the overthrow of the world. Mycelium can be a network that lets plants communicate, but it doesn't let them, you know, by step evolution become a brain controlling bean. The soybeans have been found um, in humans to cause absolutely no changes in the brain structure or no measurable changes in the brain structure, except for elderly Italian women which is odd. And even then, it had something to do with their existing dementia. Monsanto trying to be deep soy. I I do think Monsanto, I think companies do want to corner the soybean market because it is so valuable. And all the stuff about Henry Ford and the car and the soybeans, and that's all true. Those are all true pieces of information. But what I, what I, and I did spend a week researching this. And what happened was I came, went into it and I wanted it to be real. I wanted a grand soy unified theory, which is an actual term to be real. I wanted deep soy to be real. These are some of the most requested stories that I've gotten. People want to know because this is all on the conspiracy list. I go into this stuff. I want it to be real. And even I was like, halfway through my research, it's like I said, I'm finding nothing. I had to start then looking at where soybeans can grow, can they grow anywhere? No, there's very certain... I went in with the hypothesis that soy is sentient, intelligent, and it is evolving to basically take over. That was the hypothesis I went in. Did I go in believing that hypothesis? No. No. That was just the the most entertaining hypothesis, and I could find no information to back up anything that I found. I could just find bits and pieces of scientific articles and history of the soybeans and cultivation and stuff like that. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys.